Hi there, and let's get started. We've spent the last few videos looking over different ways of optimizing your workflow, but I think there is that possibility that it's starting to get a little bit jumbled. Which processes should you be using and when? So what I thought in the end was it might be helpful to construct a flowchart that people could use as a reference based on their footage and machine. I'll put a link of the flowchart in the video description below, and I'll keep it live so that once further upgrades and versions of DaVinci Resolver are released, I can keep updating it with the relevant information. You begin by importing your 4K footage inside of the media page. So I'm making a bin, and I'm just going to call it 4K to 1080p to 4K workflow. Above is my 4K footage and now I'm going to just drag and drop them into the media pool. Now I have a choice of one of two steps. Either my footage is raw and requires the bearing, or it's non-raw footage. So it could be DSLR, it could be MXF, uh, all series of prosumer cameras, Sony EX3, etc. So in my case, I now have to generate optimized media at an HD resolution. So I'm going to click and drag across my clips, right click, and select Generate Optimized Media. After that, I have a couple of options. If I have a really powerful workstation that's capable of processing the media as it is, I can simply move on to working with smart caches, which will record any changes that I make to my footage and allow me to play it back in real time. If you give this a go and you find that you're experiencing some severe lag, what you might want to do is generate proxies on the fly to allow you to play back your footage in real time. As you can see, if you're using non-raw footage, this is your next step. All right, now that the optimized media has been generated, I can proceed onto the edit page, create a new timeline. And drop my clips inside. I have to make sure that inside of playback, use optimized media if available is turned on. So now I should be experiencing a much quicker playback speed. Since we've decided to go through the proxy workflow, we are also going to have to go into playback and activate a proxy mode. And I've got nice real-time playback, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner, a green symbol on my GPU status indicator. After you've generated your optimized media and proxies and enabled them, you should move on to your cache workflows. So as we saw earlier, there's two types of caching, smart and user. Smart caching will prioritize itself on clips that you're currently working on, whereas the user option only starts caching once you've manually specified for it to do so. If you do this and you find that your workstation is still struggling to play back in real time, you might consider generating a lower resolution and lower codec quality optimized media. This is even if you're working with non-raw or non-debayered footage. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to turn on smart caching to let it do its own thing. So once again, inside of playback, render cache, activate smart caching. Once you've completed your project, all you have to do is make sure that you disconnect any optimized media or proxies. So go back into playback and untick, use optimized media if available, and turn off proxy mode, and then enter the deliver page for the final stage. To ensure you're delivering the original 4K footage, pick the 4K resolution that's relevant to your project, and also expose more options as it tends to give you further control over the quality of your export. So for example, I could force the sizing to the highest quality in case within my options I've used one of the lower quality bilinear resizing options. I could force the debay resolution to the higher quality so that I'm not using any of my half resolutions. I do not want to use optimized media or my render cached images. And once I drop my in and out points, I can now add this timeline to my render queue and render out my project. If you're not really sure how this flowchart applies to you or which path you should be following, I'll leave a message in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much and until next time!